What is up guys, this is Kai from Kai Creative. Welcome to the channel and welcome to another filmmaking video. My name is Kai Song, I'm here with SVH Media and today we're looking at the Canon PowerShot G7X Mark II. Is it really the ultimate Canon vlogging camera? And if you're a professional photographer, videographer or filmmaker, should you even bother? So I've been using the Canon PowerShot G7X Mark II now for well over a year and I consider it to be the sidearm to the arsenal of camera equipment that I normally carry with me. And I say this because it's always strapped to the side of my belt where it's ready at a moment's notice to film things like b-roll, time lapses, behind the scenes footage, selfies, vlogs, generally anything that I wouldn't hand over to a paying client. So today we're vlogging with the G7X Mark II in Malta, it is an excellent camera for travel. The compact nature of this camera makes it ideal to take with you wherever you go. And if you're a regular watcher of our channel, then no doubt you would have seen footage from this particular camera in our previous videos. And if you're not a regular watcher of our channel, consider subscribing. The G7X Mark II boasts a 1 inch 20.1 megapixel CMOS sensor with the processing power of Canon's Digic 7 chip. It also features an f-stop 1.8 to 2.8 24mm lens with a 4.2x optical zoom with image stabilisation and ISO up to 12800. With the G7X Mark II I'm always using it to film b-roll. A lot of the stuff that you've seen from my content probably is from this camera because it's just so easy. Another notable characteristic of this compact camera is that it features a manual control for your video functions. So you can manually set up your shutter speed, aperture and ISO giving you DSLR-like capabilities. See if you can tell the difference between these two shots, one on a full frame Canon 5D Mark IV and the other on a G7X Mark II both set with the same manual settings. So I personally wouldn't use this camera for any professional work that I'd give to a client. And if you're just gonna use it for vlogging or behind the scenes stuff or casual social media stuff, you'd probably just have it on auto anyway. Another great feature of the G7X Mark II is the time-lapse functionality. Now this is limited to 300 shots of a couple of seconds each. So if you just want some time-lapse videos quickly for your travel videos, just set up the time-lapse feature, leave it there for 300 frames or 300 takes, and then you have time-lapses that are similar to these, which look pretty decent for your you know, casual YouTube videos. The aperture on this camera makes it great for taking photos and I've used the G7X Mark II a lot for the thumbnails on my YouTube page. As well as that, you can see a lot of photos taken on the G7X Mark II on my Instagram feed. Go check us out at Kai Creative Triple I. The aperture of 1.8 to 2.8 makes it ideal for low light conditions and it also has a handy built-in flash just in case. You can also film in 50 frames per second, full HD allowing you to get that sweet slow motion in post-production. The G7X Mark II also has image stabilization set to three different levels, which allows you to remove a serious amount of handheld shake from your footage. Ooh, another massive plus of this camera is of course the flip out screen. And it flips out two ways. First of all, you get the 45 degree flip looking down. So you can look up over the heads of people at big events or with crowded areas. And of course, the full flip out screen. This is a massive selling point for vloggers. Of course, they can see themselves and they can also make sure they're in focus and they can take selfies. The screen is also touch focus, which is awesome when it works. The simple Wi-Fi connection to your phone via the Canon app makes it great to transfer photos and videos and get them onto your social media in minutes. So the SD cards in the G7X Mark II seem to go on forever, especially if you have a 32GB or a 64GB card in there. 
I generally take this camera on several projects with a 64 gigabyte card and get tons of footage, behind the scenes, photos, time lapses, and the SD card just doesn't seem to get touched or hit. Just make sure that you check it every so often so that you don't get caught out. The battery life is rated for up to 240 photos or 240 shots. I'm not exactly sure what that converts to in video time. As I said before, I'm using it to shoot a few seconds here and there, maybe up to 30 seconds to two minutes, not shooting it for hours all day, every day. I did notice, however, that after taking a few time lapses, the battery did drain quite significantly. So if you're looking to do time lapses all day, just be aware of that. You can charge up the battery via the standard battery charger or via the side USB cable. I've only ever had one battery for this camera and I've had no other reason to buy a second one. No camera is perfect, and the G7X Mark II is no exception. It does have its flaws. When it comes to sound, there are no inputs for external audio recording devices, which means you have to make do with the onboard sound. Holding it about a meter or half a meter away from your face, you can actually pick up semi-decent sound. Here's some sound where I'm talking to the microphone, talking to the camera directly with the onboard built-in microphone now. Another issue with the G7X Mark II is the autofocus. Sometimes you can be tapping away at the screen for ages and it just simply doesn't focus on anything. We took some footage on the plane in Malta and here we are trying to film the plane, tapping away at the screen and it simply didn't focus for more than 20 seconds. This autofocus flaw can also be a major issue when you're trying to film B-roll. So if something is moving and you want to film it in threes, then by the time you filmed one shot and you focused on it and then tried to move to a second shot to get a different angle, it's probably moved on or something's changed. Again, a massive issue if you're trying to film your B-roll or cutaways using this camera. Another massive issue with having a flip out screen is of course the moving parts. When you're constantly flipping the screen up and down and moving it across, it starts to get loose. And with the G7X Mark II, there are only two small screws holding this screen in place. This means that eventually they become loose and your screen starts to wobble. Now I was able to fix this problem by going onto YouTube and finding some solutions. Using thread glue to put the screws back in helps to keep it in place, keep it in position. And that worked for a while, but after a few more months, again, it came loose. So not as robust as you would expect from a Canon camera. My particular G7X Mark II, one of the issues I came across was when you turn the camera off, the lens retracts and the flaps that protect the lens don't cover properly, as you can see here. You have to flick it to get it to go down. For a 500 pound camera, you'd expect Canon to have ironed out these small issues. So you can pick one of these cameras up new for about 500 pounds, which is about $600, or if you get one second hand, you can go on eBay, perhaps get one for about £350, which is about $450, $470. So should you get one? That's the big question. It really depends on what you want to do with it. Like I said before, I would never use this camera for any professional work, so I wouldn't hand any footage from this camera over to a paying client. I personally bought it to film things like behind the scenes footage, vlogs, take photos, do time lapses and selfies and things like that. And for your own personal social media, this camera is amazing. So it's brilliant for self-promotion of your brand and your own personal content. So thanks for watching guys. If you found this content useful, please do leave us a like and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Also don't forget to subscribe to my man SVH Media who's been doing all the camera work for us today. His links, our links, social media links all in the channel down below. If you have any ideas for filming content that you want to see in the future, do let me know in the comment section below or hit me up on social media. That's it for now. Stay creative. Don't forget to imagine, implement and inspire. And I will see you guys next time on Kai Creative.